You need some additional software for the project that you're working on, so you scour the internet to find it. You find what you're looking for, but it's in a PPA. You mumble to yourself, what's a PPA? I pop onto your shoulder and say, don't worry, I'll explain it to you. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to add a PPA repository to a Linux system uh, using the apt package manager. Stick with me. I've got a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Make sure you give this video a like if you like it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comment section below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end to catch all the great information we'll be sharing with you today. Let's do this thing. All right, so let me go ahead and shrink my face here before we go ahead and get into what PPAs are. Now, um, anytime that you run, let's just do a sudo apt update. I'm gonna put in the password. All right, perfect. So when we look at the output of the sudo apt password command, I'm sorry, the sudo, the sudo apt update command, you see these right here, hit one, and then just get two, get three, get four, and then uh, get five. Those are actually repositories that it's reaching, uh, the apt, the apt uh, update command is reaching out to to see if there's any updates for any of the packages that we have installed in our systems. Now, we wanna add additional software that we can go ahead and install from additional repositories, and that's what we're gonna be doing through what is known as a PPA, or a personal package archive. Um, these are additional app repositories containing applications. These are gonna commonly be um, put together by you know, maybe an individual company organization or something like that. That is not, that's not gonna be part of the distribution to make this software available to you. Now, you do wanna keep in mind when dealing with PPAs, there's always the possibility that the PPA maintainer could stop maintaining the, um, maintaining the um, the archive, leaving you open to vulnerabilities because you're not going to be getting any updates from it. Um, and you, it may be a while before you notice that it actually is breaking. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you trust the PPA maintainer before adding it. Um, if you're going to add a PPA, I would suggest getting it directly from the developer of the application that you need. You know, like if, you know, like for example, Mozilla, you know, if you want to actually, you know, update to, you know, maybe a certain, uh, certain version of Firefox and you want to do it through app and you want to add that report, you want to add that repository, you, you would want to go to Mozilla's website and actually obtain that information so that you can make sure that you're going to have the best chance of having a long-term support. Now there is an actual website. So let me actually go ahead and give me just a second here. I'm going to bring up my web browser. All right, and there we go. If you go to this website right here, I'm actually going to paste it into the top of the browser. Go in here. Oops. Why is this not copying? There we go. HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash launchpad.net slash Ubuntu slash plus PPAS. This is going to allow you to search for different PPAs. So you go there, give it just a second, and then here you go. It gives you some of the latest uploads, most active, and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, you could actually just go ahead and just do a search here. Like, for example, if you wanted to search Firefox, you just do that, and then it's going to give you all of the different ones. We can see that there's a total of 311 results for Firefox. This is a great resource if you're actually looking for stuff. I typically don't go through this method. I usually, like I said, go directly to the developer of the application to go ahead and get the PPA, just because I want to make sure that you know I'm going to continue getting updates. You know, as more than likely as long as that 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 organization continues to exist. Now. One of the things that I also want to make sure that I that I do show you is anytime that it's actually going to add a repository, it's going to add it to this directory. CD, um, CD uh, apt, and then it's going to be sources. Oops, got to put the word slash there. Sources dot list dot d. There we go, and this is where it'll actually be right now. Um, it does have a it does have one there already. I'm actually going to go ahead and just, let's just go ahead and do that. sudo uh, rmrf hd. We're actually gonna go ahead and just remove that um, because I wanna go ahead and show you the actual process of doing it through um, manually adding this stuff. So let's go ahead and 
clear this out and we can actually go into actually adding the repository. Cool. So, okay. So to add an, add, a, add a repository, it's going to be pretty simple. It's going to be, let's just, let me actually just go back to my home directory. I'm going to clear this out again. And it's going to be sudo apt add repository. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put in PPA colon, and then you're going to put in, it'll be like a username or a reference name, or I'm not really sure what exactly they call it, but you'll, um, you'll be able to use this right here. And if you actually go into one of these, I'm just going to go down here to this Firefox ESR. It'll actually tell you what to put in here. So that first thing, it'll be PPA colon, and then you can see like here's like Andy Kempe slash Firefox ESR. Um, so that's what this first one is. It's just like an identifier name or whatever. And then after that, it's going to be the actual name of the, the PPA. So in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and do fire. This is not that same one we were just looking at, by the way. We're going to go ahead and put that in, and we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And then it's going to go ahead and just say, hey, you sure you want to add this? And then we're going to say yes. Well, if we do an ls again, we do sudo app. Now we've got it updated, so now we can do a sudo apt update. There we go. And then if we were to go ahead and do an ls on the Etsy apt sources list, we can see that it is indeed in there again. And then all you have to do is really just update it. And we can see now when we run through the update, that we're actually, we've got an additional one there, right here. See, this one right here, this hit four, we can see PhD slash Firefox. So we've got that one there. Now let's go ahead and talk about removing a PPA repository. So this is gonna be pretty easy as well. Now, if you do use this method that I'm gonna show you, you are gonna to have to make sure that you manually delete the, delete any applications that you installed prior to, um, prior to continuing. Um, because to remove it, because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is, is those, those applications are going to stay there and they're just not going to get updates, uh, which, you know, can put you in a huge security risk. Unless, unless it's like an application that is not going to get updates again. And you know that for a fact, you just want to get rid of it, get rid of all, you know, get rid of the, um, the PPA, uh, that's fine. Then you could go ahead and just leave it there. You could use this method. So let me go ahead and just kind of shrink this out. Now what we're going to do is for that one, we're going to do sudo apt. And then this is going to be add repository, but we're going to do tac tac remove, and we're going to just basically do the same thing with the tac tac remove. PhD slash Firefox. We're going to hit enter, and then it's going to kind of give us the same thing again. There we go. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Now, if we do sudo apt update, we don't see it there anymore. Let's see if it still has the. Etsy app sources list. And we can see that it did indeed purge it out of there. So it's gone. Now I do want to show show you one more thing, but I'm also but before I do that, I gotta add back this. I've gotta add back this um this PPA. Okay, so what I want to show you here is I want to show you how to purge the PAA. Uh, now this purge command, it's not, it's not in there by default. So you'll have to add it yourself, but what this will do is if you want to go ahead and if you want to go ahead and remove the PPA, but also any applications that are associated with it, you're going to use this command and it's pretty easy to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and do sudo apt install PPA, uh, purge. We're going to have to go through the install. Let's just go ahead and hit that. Boom. We've got it there. All right. So we've got, we just reinstalled, we just re-added that Firefox uh, PPA repository. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and remove that using PPA purge. We're going to do sudo PPA purge. And then we're going to go ahead and do uh, PPA, just same thing as we did with the other one, PHD, Firefox. And then we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And we can see here it's updating it. Now we can see two things here. Um, sorry if my head's a little in the way there, but it does say that actually what I'll do is I'll just go like this and move this up. We can see here that it says, uh, PPA to be removed, PHD Firefox, but it says warning could not find packages list for PPA because we didn't install any from this PPA. And I don't think this is one that they're actually actively updating. It's just there because when I, when I, inst when I added it and then tried to look for any software, it didn't change anything. So it doesn't look, doesn't look like there's actually any, any software that's associated with it. Um, Unless it's like, unless there was some kind of issue with it, um, you know, when we actually imported it, which wouldn't be on us, it would be on the maintainer. So, 
Um, yeah, but yeah, this would remove it if it were there. So pretty cool stuff, right? Now you know how to add a PPA repository if you so need it. Um, think, uh, make sure you check out this, um, this other video from my channel as well before taking off. Thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.